Engineering 305, this is Chapter 6, Section 11. This is actually the last section we're going to cover in uh, Chapter 6. This is Torsion of Non-Circular Sections. Course Learning Objectives. Um, none. There are no new learning objectives. This is simply an extension of the other learning objectives. We are using torsion to create stresses on a shaft. These shafts happen to be non-circular, where everything that we've done in previously has related to circular sections. This is now um, this is now a change. The equations from the study guide. We have um, there's an entire section labeled the torsion of non-circular sections, and you're seeing new equations that are similar but not. Um, we've got an equation for the shear stress, which is a function of the torque and the geometry. It was T C over J torque distance to the extreme fiber over that j, the polar moment of inertia. Now it's the geometry is now represented by a squared b. And so it's a little new. It's a little different, but it's it's the torque and the geometry. It's a force and an area. So the, there's the parallels there. And then uh, the other equation is the equation for deflection, which is now tl over. And then there's this term b beta a cubed B, which is uh, the geometry term, and then there's the G, which is the material term. So we've still got a, uh, a pseudo, I'll call it a force in green. Oh, I tried to go green. A force in green, a length, and then geometry and material. So and then I put this on the guide because I, I think it's important. A and B are the lengths of the short and the long side, respectively. That is, you have to know, you have to realize A is equal to the short side. B is equal to the long. And, and because, because you get an A squared B, you can see how that makes a difference. Or an A cubed B. We're, we're dealing with more of the short side than we are with the long side. The short side is the more important um, of these two variables. I'm trying to get my erase going so I can get those, get that all off the screen. Because it's all written in the text. Oh, there, clean sheet. Um, I, I will say this too. This sentence, the numerical factors A and B can be obtained from a chart. That's what the book says. But I have provided this equation, which is a good approximation for the chart in the book. And it makes it easier to use. So let's keep it going. Assumptions that we had made when we did these uh, circular sections was that we had a linear distribution of the shear stress. That's how we were able to integrate this. We pulled constants out. We That's no longer true. That's not true for regular sections. And so... We can't use this because that assumption isn't true. But the other one was that plane sections remain plane. And that is that is not true for rectangular sections either. These systems warp out of plane. And so that's um, we, we, we just can't use this. That's where we get these new equations. There they are. The equations that I showed from the formula sheet. These are due to a uh, investigator, an engineer, a scientist, uh, Saint Venant, who did this work in the 1850s, and it has um, held up since then. And he developed this chart. He developed this chart to go with that. That you can see. There's a little bit of separation here between a and alpha and beta. Um, again, noting alpha is the short, or a is the short side. And B is the long side as you plug those into the equations. Um, but later, other investigators have said, you know, we really want to do a curve fit because we want to plug this into a system and we want it to be. And if you look carefully, the distance down here is between point 0.2 and point. So this is, yeah, that's a, that's a difference depending on what my use is, the bigger or the smaller. Those are 30% different. But in general, that's a really low aspect ratio. We're probably not going to be, um, this is getting close to square. Well, one is square. And this is tall and thin out here. 
as we slide across. So other investigators have come along and in a different textbook, I believe it's the Shigley textbook, they give us this relationship. Alpha is equal to beta. They're roughly the same. They, they are once you get above here. And that's approximately equal to one third times B over B plus A. And I just think that instead of, um, yeah, my picture's in the way, isn't it? Let's get rid of that. Um, one third times B over B plus A. And that will make solving problems a little bit easier. Uh, it makes grading things for me easier because you're all using the exact same values for alpha and beta if, if you've done the problem correctly. But that's neither here nor there. Now, this is a whole new, this opens up a whole new avenue of discovery in that we can now do circular sections or non-circular sections and we're good. We have good, we'll, we'll be able to do shear stresses from torsion in, with those problems, circular or non-circular. The next presentation, honestly, there are no example problems. We just have a new equation and as I've said in the past, we are good at equations. The book doesn't even give you an example problem. Um, the homework problems you can dive right into uh, and, and get those done using this new skill and these new equations. Um, but the next lecture or the next presentation is going to be from chapter seven related to beams. It will probably, I believe I'll do it all in one shot covering sections one through four. So, yep, don't worry, more to come.